Now listen to this story that we will tell to you. The story of the Minnow, five passengers and crew. With Gilligan aboard the ship, the skipper by his side. An unexpected storm came up and tossed them with the tide. They found themselves a shipwrecked clan, lost on Gilligan's Isle. Gilligan and Skipper, the millionaire, his wife. The movie star professor and Mary Ann began a brand new life. What creatures they encountered? What riddles did they face? What mysteries did haunt them in a strange but happy place? On the new adventures of Gilligan, Gilligan, Paul on Gilligan's Island. Very well, Gilligan. Where's the repast? Re-what? Dinner. You rang the dinner bell. Oh, dinner's not ready yet. I was just testing the triangle. It fell down and I was... That's the trouble with this island. Nobody ever knows what anybody else is doing. What's needed here is leadership. A good corporate executive who would take the bull by the horns. And no one's better with the bull than you, dear. <laughs> Well, just don't stand there, Gilligan. What is on the menu? Dried gravy. No, no, no. What's on the bill of fare? Hundreds of things. Really? Yeah. Beans. <laughs> oh, Mr. Howell, they're really not that bad. They're the best thing not to eat if you're on a diet. I'll be drummed out of the gourmet society if they saw me sit down to a plate of this, this... Ugh. Look, look, even an animal wouldn't eat it. <laughs> There's no meal supervision. These meals should be planned. You mean they should be planted. <laughs> well, the auditions for the Island Drama Club are open. Oh, oh that's great. That's I awesome. say that's very cool. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. As you all know, I will be the star. Uh, just, just one moment, please. Uh, Lovey will read for that part. I thought I was going to be the star. What play are we doing? That's unimportant. Everyone knows I'm always the star. Wait a minute. I'll decide who's the star. I'm the director. I beg to differ. I've had considerable theatrical experience in college. Owing to a total lack of organization, we find ourselves with a crisis. I don't want to be an alarmist, but all of us are going to have to start conserving. For example, this tree used to yield an abundance of coconuts. Now it yields only two. Correction, three coconuts. Now if we all cooperate in this conservation program, and above all, don't hoard. We'll get through in good shape. Good. Oh, yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah, I'll buy sure. That. I'm I'm sure. 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 I don't think we should do this. The professor said we shouldn't hoard. How many times have I told you we're not hoarding? Well, let's see. There were five times on the other side of the island, three times on the last street, twice at the... Never mind! <laughs> Shh. Shh. The point is, by gathering all the coconuts, we're not hoarding. Oh, no? No, we're keeping the others from hoarding. <laughs> now get up in the tree. Wait a minute. Last time you held the sack and I climbed the tree. All right, this time you climb up the tree and I'll hold the sack. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Gilligan, when are you going to start dropping coconuts? But I am dropping them. Oh, yeah? Well, how come I'm not catching any? I suppose someone in midair is swiping them. Hey, someone's swiping them in midair! Uh, 
Thurston. You are a genius. If the others only knew how lucky they were to have me here to save them from the evils of hoarding. <laughs> I feel awfully sneaky doing this. But it's for everybody's own good. Hoarding is terrible. All right, Snubby. Now, take these to our hut. <laughs> okay, Gilligan. Hide these coconuts. Sorry, Snubby. I just remembered. We gotta conserve. <laughs> now, now, Snubby. I'll keep your banana safe with the coconuts. Your coconuts? Those were our coconuts. No, those were ours. Lovey's and mine. They were not. You swiped them from us. I tell well, you, they, they were ours. ours. I say uh, that you swiped them and I... Look, he's calling you. You, if you don't allow it. it. All right, all right, we'll divide them up now. Gilligan, where'd you put the coconuts? Oh, they're perfectly safe. They're in that little hole there. Do you know what that hole is? I know what it isn't. It isn't a good place to put coconuts. You could never make a movie about this island where you put coconuts in a volcano and they come up shredded. Why not? No one would believe all the chaos. Oh, oh come on, boy. will you? <laughs> Goodness me. <yeah. laughs> it's all your fault. You were wrong. You were wrong. I, what do you mean? It's it's your fault. Fault. Now that I have your attention, it is obvious that what we have here is a classic example of socio-economic and political erosion. Gee, I thought it was a mess. Here, here. Where, where? <laughs> what we need is leadership. There, there. The best way to get a good leader is to hold a free election for president. Uh, president, yeah, yeah absolutely right. President. Right. Very good I idea. Vote. I vote for Thurston. I vote for the skipper. I vote for Mary Ann. Just a minute, just a minute. Now, I said free election, which means nominations, campaigns, and secret ballots. And we'll also have to elect a vice president. Well, it's hey, great. Right, that's just what I was thinking of. Vice president. Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. And I promise, if elected, that there'll be free passes to the polo matches every Sunday afternoon. And I also promise, if elected, a three-month subscription to Town and Snob magazine. <laughs> it's no use, Lobby. My constituents aren't turning out. Don't get discouraged, dear. I shan't. Perhaps I haven't been campaigning on the right issue. <laughs> And if I'm elected, I promise you a flounder in every pot and two surfboards in every hut. More, more. Okay, a hundred flounders, two hundred surfboards, and two pots. And if elected, I promise equal rights for everyone, men and women alike. There will be absolutely no favoritism. No special interest groups will influence my decisions. And most important, the cornerstone of my campaign will be absolute individualism. We must all stand on our own two feet. Very good, Marianne. Now you're ready to go out and face the public all alone. Without you? No, I'd be scared to death. <laughs> And if elected, my first act will be to establish a constitutional government. But let us define our terms. Government, by definition, is the authoritative direction and restraint exercised over the action of men in communities, <laughs> societies, and states. The direction of the affairs of states, 
Or, as relates to political rule and administration, government is necessary to the existence of society. In other words, the form or system of rules by which a state or community is governed. Such as uh, monarchical government, as in England, or, or the executive power. <laughs> are there any questions? Hmm? What? I said, are there any questions? Oh, yeah. What is breakfast? <laughs> hear ye! Hear ye! Even though I am the leading candidate to bring order out of chaos to this fair island, I feel that in the spirit of fair play and good sportsmanship, I should endorse someone else for the office of president. Gee, that's really swell, Skipper. I wonder who it is. So without further ado, I present the man of the hour, our esteemed colleague, and the next president of this island, if I don't make it, Gilligan! Gilligan? I'm Gilligan. Say something, little buddy. Huh? Oh, yeah. I resign. What? I mean, I'm not running. But you've got to run. Everybody's running. Well, if he doesn't want to run for president, let him run for vice president. Well, everybody knows the vice president does just what the president tells him. Well, that's good. I believe everything people tell me. <laughs> Thurston Howard is the name, do-da, do-da. As president, I'll play the game on the do-da day. <laughs> this balloon symbolizes my platform. The arse full of hot air. <laughs> Unlimited horizons. He means pie in the sky. I heard that. I'll show you. <laughs> oh, tish and tosh. Okay, Gilligan, cast off. We realize that the way to a voter's heart is through his stomach. If elected, we will give free pies and cakes. Free pies and cakes? That's right. And here's yours, a coconut pie. Oh, boy. But what's the lumps? Those are the coconuts. <laughs> now then, has everybody voted? Oh, yeah. Very well, then. We'll count the votes. Hold it. One of our citizens hasn't voted. Uh, but who? <laughs> Just a minute. You're just an animal. You can't vote. <laughs> Why, well, you can't even read. He can, too. He can read just as good as I can. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> well, go on, let him go. What do you mean? Yeah, absolutely not. 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 I, I say go ahead. All right, just a moment. How about a compromise? We'll give Snubby half a vote. He can vote for vice president. No. No. Uh, no. All right, let's have a show of hands. All those opposed? One, two, three. Now, all in favor? One, two, three, four. The ayes have it. Well, now, now, wait a minute. He can't vote on, on his right to vote. I didn't count his vote. I'm counting mine. I'm in favor of Snubby voting for the vice president. Now, this is true democracy in action. <laughs> the moment has arrived. The first president of our island is nobody. nobody. Nobody? Yes, apparently everybody voted for himself. Therefore, no one has the majority for president. But what do we do now? Well, it's out of our hands. Since we have no president, the vice president must assume leadership. So, I give you the first vice president of our island, Gilligan. I demand a recount. I wasn't even running. I've recounted, Gilligan. You've won. 
You're the vice president. Now, I demand to know how he got elected. Let me, just let me see those ballots. Now, hold on, Mr. Howell. Yeah, hold on. This is a secret ballot, Mr. Howell. Yeah, secret ballot. And in a democracy, nobody has to reveal the way he voted. Yeah, voted. Well, I'd just like to know how this, the, the, this person got into office. I can't reveal who voted for whom, but I can tell you that the vote for Gilligan was unanimous. We all voted for him. <laughs> Very well. Your vice president is now ready to have his first press conference. Mr. Uh, Mr. Vice, vice president, president, vice president, Mr. Vice president. May, I, may I please? Oh, this is a dark day in history. Worst thing since the market crash in 29. <laughs> yes, Miss Marianne? As you know, Mr. Vice President, our island is beset with many problems. Food, inadequate housing, hoarding, clothing shortage. And don't forget inflation. As Vice President, what is going to be your first act? I'm declaring a holiday. A holiday? That's the last thing we need. Not for you, for me. See ya. <laughs> oh, Snubby. It's great to get away from the cares and burdens of the office. <laughs> oh, there you are, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President, we have a crisis. Can't talk to you now, Ginger. I'm about to cast. But, Mr. Vice President... Not now, Ginger. I I've hooked a big one. <laughs> We have a monumental problem to solve. We must have an immediate decision. I can't make any decisions now, Ginger. I'm all tied up. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> tight. Boy, I don't know. My old buddy has sure changed since he became vice president. He promised us a clean sweep, but he hasn't swept out our hut in days. <laughs> 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 Vice President! This is our island beautification plan. We want your signature. I can't give you my signature, but I can sign my name. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, uh, what is all this I hear about income tax? That's right. Everybody has to pay it. <laughs> but nobody has an income. Oh. Well, in that case, nobody has to pay it. Then how are you going to pay for the cost of government? Well, I'll pay for it out of my vice presidential salary. But you don't get a salary. Oh. Then it all works out even. <laughs> Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President. You've got to stop them. Stop who? Ginger and Mary Ann. Just look at what they're doing in the name of island beautification. Girls, as your vice president, I want you to know that Mrs. Howell wants you to stop that. But, Mr. Vice President, you passed a law giving us the right to beautify the island. I passed the law. Well, then, unpass it. Yeah? Okay, I unpassed the law. A ball of nerve! You can't do that. He can so. Mrs. Howell is right. That's oh, not fair. Say that again. Don't do it say myself. that at all. It's Absolutely. Wrong. Who gave you the right? See here, Mr. Vice President. I think it's time you came home and cleaned up your part of the hut. Wait your turn, Skipper. We were here first. How about those taxes? Now, don't change the subject. Get in line. Taxes schmaxes. I got a messy hut on my hands. You think your hut is messy? Oh, look at ours. You keep out of this now. I, 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 I want to know about taxes. I, I want to know about taxes. You, you want to know about it. Unless our fiduciary is our Christmas. I want to know about my hut. Now, make up your mind. What mine? So you see, Snubby, that's why I resigned as vice president and have gone into exile. I was such a failure. All I did was cause arguments and everybody yelling at everybody else. They're all better off without me. Gilligan, where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. 
Here he is, everybody. I found him. Oh, oh there he is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hello, Hello, you found you desert your office. I found him. I'm not vice president anymore, so don't get mad at me. We're not mad at you, little pal. You're not? No, no you're, you're our boy. We're boy. with you. We love we're our with little you. vice yeah. president. <laughs> you're so cute. It was our fault for electing you vice president in the first place. Yes, we all thought that once one of us became president, you'd be the easiest person to order around. But we never dreamed you'd end up as our leader. We all learned a great lesson about government. You have to set up ground rules before you can have an election. You mean, uh, like a constitution? Exactly. You gotta come back, Gilligan, or else. Or else? Or else what? Or else we'll make you president. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, little pal, you really learned something about politics today. Yeah, I learned I don't belong in it. It's pretty hard to find your niche in life. Not for me. Huh? Sure, every time I find a niche, I scratch it. No, 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 never mind. I was talking about politics. Oh, yeah. I had a grandfather who was in politics. Really? Yeah, he spent half his time running for office. How did he spend the other half? Running for cover. I had an uncle who was very big in political circles. Huh? Yes, sir. Stood on his record for years. Stood on his record? Yeah, to keep the voters from taking a good look at it. <laughs> good night, little buddy. Good night, Skipper. See ya.